Good morning and welcome to the AZZ Inc. third quarter 2024 earnings conference call. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing followed by zero. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Sandy Martin of Three Part Advisors. Please go ahead. Thank you, Operator. Good morning and thank you for joining us today to review AZZ's financial results for the fiscal 2024 third quarter, which ended November 30, 2023. Joining the call today are Tom Ferguson, President and Chief Executive Officer, Philip Schlamm, Chief Financial Officer, and David Nark, Senior Vice President of Marketing, Communications, and Investor Relations. After today's prepared remarks, we will open the call for questions. Please note the live webcast for today's call, which can be found at www.azz.com slash investor dash events. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion today will include forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provisions of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Forward-looking statements, by their nature, are uncertain and outside of the company's control. Except for actual results, our comments containing forward-looking statements may involve risks and uncertainties, some of which are detailed from time to time in documents filed by AZZ with the Securities and Exchange Commission, including the annual report on Form 10-K for the fiscal year. These statements are not guarantees of future performance, therefore undue reliance should not be placed upon them. Actual results could differ materially from these expectations. In addition, today's call will discuss non-GAAP financial measures. Non-GAAP financial measures should be considered a supplement to and not a substitute for GAAP financial measures. We refer you to the reconciliation from GAAP to non-GAAP measures included in today's earnings press release. I would now like to turn the call over to Tom Ferguson. Tom? Thank you, Sandy. Good morning, and thank you for joining us to review our fiscal 2024 third quarter results. Today, I'll start by covering company highlights for the quarter before passing it over to Philip to discuss AZZ's detailed financial results and our balance sheet. Then Dave will provide industry commentary on our end markets, and I will conclude our presentation by covering our sustainability efforts and AZZ's full year outlook before opening the line for questions. AZZ is North America's market leader in hot dip galvanizing and cold coating solutions, leveraging our scale and strategic footprint to better serve customers with excellence and expertise. Our leadership has been focused on strong execution this year, and I am pleased to report that the segments have performed exceptionally well through the third quarter. These results are a testament to the strength of our company, talented teams, effective strategic plan, and ongoing commitment to operational excellence. Collectively, these attributes contribute to our ability to provide valuable, differentiated solutions and services to our customers. Turning to our results, Total sales for the quarter were $382 million, up 2.2%. Momentum continued for metal coatings with third quarter sales of $163 million, up 3.1% versus last year's quarter. Precoat metals also grew during the quarter to $218 million, up 1.6% from a year ago. We grew sales organically and improved profitability in the quarter. And I am pleased to report that we continue to effectively secure market share without sacrificing our value pricing discipline. We increased adjusted earnings per share for the quarter by 53% to $1.19 and grew adjusted EBITDA by 23% to $86 million versus prior year. This led to strong cash from operations for the quarter of 63 million. As a result, EBITDA margins were 30% for metal coatings and 18.4% for pre-coat metals during the quarter, both within the stated targeted ranges for each segment. In short, our dedication to delivering best-in-class customer service and ongoing enhancements in operations led to increased sales, improved profitability, and significant cash flow this quarter. We continue to develop and enhance our operational technologies, which sets us apart from the competition. Our digital galvanizing system, or DGS, is AZZ's proprietary technology that could connects our 41 galvanizing facilities to the company's ERP system and provides real-time visibility and order tracking to allow superior customer service. 
Similarly, in Pre-Code's 13 facilities, CoilZone tracks customers' inventory and provides real-time access to project scheduling. These advanced platforms, along with our outstanding teams focused on providing excellent service, position AZZ as a highly differentiated metal coatings provider to customers throughout North America. As Philip will discuss more in a moment, we are strengthening the balance sheet and plan to continue to deploy capital carefully. We have worked diligently to reduce debt, improve our leverage ratio, and reprice our term loan at Revolver to lower interest costs, which continues to reinforce our decision to self-fund the Greenfield Precoat Metals facility in Washington, Missouri, instead of going with a sale leaseback. We are highly focused on long-term value creation through our sustainable solutions. We believe that by continually investing in our people and relentlessly executing our strategy, we will accelerate AZZ's value creation and ensure sustainability. Our strategic transformation over the last 18 months has been a catalyst for generating significantly higher run rate EBITDA and cash flow. We will continue to scale our business through both organic and inorganic growth, leveraging our highly differentiated value proposition to customers as we create long-term value for our shareholders. With that, I'll turn it over to Philip. Thanks, Tom. Good morning and thank you for participating in our third quarter update. All numbers referenced today are results from our continuing operations. As Tom mentioned, we reported fiscal year 2024 third quarter sales of $381.6 million compared to $373.3 million in last year's third quarter. Total sales increased by 2.2% from a year ago on higher metal coating sales of 3.1% and pre-coat sales up 1.6%. Third quarter gross profit was $88.1 million, or 23.1% of sales, compared to $73.1 million, or 19.6% of sales in the prior year same quarter. The 350 basis point improvement in gross margin was a result of lower zinc and overhead costs and an accounting reclassification to corporate of intangible assets amortization, partially offset by increased labor costs. Selling general and administrative expenses were $35.3 million in the third quarter which included a $4.5 million legal accrual related to a long outstanding commercial dispute with a metal coatings customer. Excluding the third quarter legal accrual, SG&A expenses for the fiscal 2024 third quarter would have been $30.8 million, or 8.1% of sales, compared to $27.7 million, or 7.4% of sales in the prior year. We reported third quarter adjusted EBITDA of $86.4 million, or 22.6% of sales, compared with $68.9 million, or 18.5% of sales last year. This 410 basis point improvement in adjusted EBITDA margin was primarily driven by favorable mix and improved operational efficiencies in both of our segments. Interest expense for the third quarter was $26 million, compared to $26 million in the prior year, mostly due to lower outstanding debt and the effect of our repricing of the term loan in August. In a moment, I will discuss the recent repricing of our revolver. Income tax expense was $8.8 million, which reflects an effective tax rate of 24.6% in the quarter, compared to 11.7% in the third quarter of the prior year. The prior year was favorably impacted by recognizing tax basis differences related to the Avail joint venture that were not repeated in the current quarter. We expect full year fiscal 2024 effective tax rate to be around 23%, with the longer-term tax rate expected to remain in the 24% range. <laughs> Adjusted net income for the third quarter was $34.8 million compared to $19.5 million in the prior year, up 78.3%. As Tom mentioned, our adjusted diluted earnings per share of $1.19 was 52.6% above the adjusted diluted earnings of $0.78 cents reported in the prior year same quarter. Since the preferred convertible shares are dilutive in the current quarter, the preferred dividends are added back to the earnings for the com company's computation of EPS. Under a full conversion assumption for the preferred convertible shares, weighted average shares outstanding in the quarter and for the nine months are approximately 29.3 million shares. Turning to our financial position and balance sheet, for the first nine months of the year, we generated st strong cash from operations of $180.9 million and free cash flow of $114 million. Free cash flow is computed based on cash from operations, less capital expenditures, and was more than double from a year ago on improved segment performance with higher sales and improved EBITDA dollars and margins, and we benefited from our focus on working capital reduction. 
capital expenditures for the first nine months were $66.9 million, including typical safety, maintenance, and gross spending, as well as about $34 million related to the new Greenfield Coil Coating Plan under construction in Washington, Missouri. The building construction is near completion, and we are beginning to receive equipment scheduled to be installed in the upcoming months. Our construction progress remains on target, and we will continue to provide progress updates each quarter. Our full year forecast 2024 capital expenditure is approximately $119 million. I'm sorry, our full year fiscal 2024 capital expenditures projection, including $70 million for our new plant, are expected to be $119 million. And heavier spending will continue through the first quarter of fiscal year 2025 as we receive, install, and ready the facility for operational testing later next year. During the third quarter, we further reduced our debt by $25 million. Through the first three quarters, we paid down $85 million of debt within our previously communicated targeted debt reduction estimate of $75 to $100 million. As Tom noted, strong operational performance and focused working capital management allowed us to reduce our net debt to leverage ratio to 3.1 times, closer to achieving our target of 3.0 times or lower. In addition to repricing our term loan B during our second quarter of the fiscal year, we also successfully repriced our $400 million senior secured revolver last month. The most recent repricing reduced our interest rate margin across all leverage based pricing tiers from a fixed SOFR plus 425 to our current effective rate of SOFR plus 300 basis points. And we also were able to remove the existing credit spread adjustment of 10 basis points. We will see a benefit going forward of lower interest costs through the maturity of our facility and plan to balance borrowings between the term loan and revolving credit facility to minimize interest costs. We have no maturities of debt until 2027. We remain confident in our ability to generate positive cash flows and support our growth plans while continuing to strengthen our balance sheet and reduce debt and leverage. As a reminder, we are in a three-year swap arrangement that fixes roughly half of the variable rate debt, and that arrangement expires in September 2025. During the first nine months of the fiscal year, we paid cash dividends to common shareholders of $12.8 million and also paid $10.8 million in dividends to our Series A preferred holders. We made no share repurchases during the quarter or year to date as debt reduction continues to be our top priority. Before turning it over to David, I want to provide an update on two matters. Number one, equity and earnings of our unconsolidated subsidiaries for the current quarter increased to 8.7 million compared to 1.0 million in the prior year quarter. The increase is primarily due to higher earnings from the Avail of JV, a release of a reserve for liquidated damages on a large project they had, and three months of equity and earnings in the current quarter compared to only one month in the prior year third quarter. We do not expect to see near term earnings levels this high during our fourth quarter or into fiscal year 2025. Lastly, Earlier this morning, the company filed a Form S3 registration statement with the Securities and Exchange Commission as a universal shelf registration that will provide future funding options to the company. Coming out of our annual strategic planning sessions earlier this year, we determined that a universal shelf registration is both prudent and good housekeeping for a business our size. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Dave. Thank you, Philip. Good morning, everyone. As Tom covered, our strategic growth plan includes a combination of organic and inorganic expansion throughout North America. We plan to utilize our large footprint to leverage market-leading positions in both segments. AZZ's trusted business partnership within our nationwide network is built on a growing base of over 3,000 customers, many of whom are longstanding blue-chip customers. Additionally, we continue to attract and retain customers based on our deep technical expertise, customer-centric technologies, superior customer service, and highly specialized solutions and services. Metal Coatings benefited this quarter from continued strength in transmission and distribution, as well as bridge and highway projects. Precoat Metal sales performance has recently trended better than the market, and our growing volumes continue to improve from intentional conversion selling, mix, and value pricing. Secular growth trends, including plastics to aluminum conversions, are important for Precoat, coupled with the team's ability to convert captive paint lines inside other companies. Tom sometimes refers to this as our de-verticalization sales strategy. 
which is a growth area for AZZ as companies decide to cut costs or outsource their roll coding needs. We expect transmission and distribution to continue to be strong in the coming months and are seeing continued evidence of infrastructure spending, including work on data centers and microchip plants. We continue to see long-term secular tailwinds associated with infrastructure projects tied to the AIIJA and CHIPS Acts, which we expect to positively impact our results in calendar 2024. Although solar and renewables end markets have recently weakened, we are seeing pockets of regional strength across the U.S. for these projects. Finally, although our business this year has seen softer demand in HVAC and transportation, appliances and residential construction end markets are returning. Non-residential construction continues to perform well with strength in warehousing, manufacturing, and agriculture. We are also optimistic by the long-term expectations for manufacturing reshoring and the positive transition to pre-painted steel and aluminum. And, as I mentioned, we are seeing the gradual movement in the container category from plastics to aluminum throughout North America. Our metal coatings and pre-coat metals teams continue to make progress on market share gains in hot dip galvanizing as well as pre-painted coil projects with key customers. With that, I'd like to turn it back over to Tom. Thanks, Dave. One of the most rewarding aspects of being a part of AZZ is the opportunity to work with over 3,900 incredibly talented people who strive to do the right thing for our employees, customers, partners, and communities where we live and work. We were recently recognized on Newsweek's 2024 America's Most Responsible Companies list based on our company-wide sustainability and ESG efforts. We are grateful that this is the second year AZZ was named among this prestigious list of companies. Collectively, our business segments provide sustainable, unmatched metal coating solutions that enhance the longevity and appearance of buildings, products, and infrastructure that are essential to everyday life. Our solutions and services are synonymous with sustainability. Regarding our business outlook in the fourth quarter ending in February, our fabrication customers continue to cite project backlogs in critical markets that, that Dave just discussed. Labor availability and employee turnover have both improved from a year ago. We continue to execute on our working capital initiatives and now are well positioned to adjust inventories of paint and zinc when demand shifts, whether due to our growth initiatives or other micro or macro economic impacts. As Philip mentioned, the construction of our Greenfield aluminum coil coating facility in Missouri is progressing. The building is substantially completed and equipment has begun to arrive and be installed in the facility. We remain excited about the growth opportunity this investment creates. We continue to anticipate a stronger fourth quarter compared to Q4 last year. Our metal coatings and pre-coat teams have demonstrated their ability to drive operational efficiencies and sustain margins with superior quality and service levels. We are narrowing and somewhat revising up our fiscal 2024 sales guidance of $1.45 to $1.55 billion, adjusted EBITDA guidance of $315 million to $335 million, and adjusted EPS guidance of $4.15 to $4.35, and our capital expenditures for fiscal 2024 are estimated to be $119 million, which includes about $70 million this year related to the Washington, Missouri Greenfield plan. Although interest rates have increased this year and interest expense ran significantly higher than we planned, we were able to pay down debt, reprice our term and revolving debt, and offset the EPS impact with incremental equity and earnings from our minority interest in the Avail joint venture and focused operating performance from our business groups. We plan to provide our fiscal year 2025 guidance in a few weeks for the new year that begins March 1st. As always, I want to thank our hardworking and highly talented team with, who execute AZZ's shared vision of growth, profitability, and operational improvements every day. Our mission is to create value in a culture where people can grow and traits really matter. TRAITS is an acronym for Trust, Respect, Accountability, Integrity, Teamwork, and Sustainability. These are AZZ's core behavioral values that continue to shape our future successes. Now, operator, please open up the call for questions. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star, then one, on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then 2. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble the roster.
And our first question comes from Lucas Pipes of B. Riley Security. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, operator. Good morning, everyone. Um, my, my first question is is on the leverage. Uh, you're, you're within um, a, a stone's throw of uh, your, your prior leverage target of three times. Uh, is there a desire to reduce leverage beyond uh, lower than three times, or, or, or do you think that uh, kind of what you had outlined previously still stands today? Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Lucas, uh, good morning. Uh, I, I think, you know, two, uh, two and a half to three times is our long-term target. So, you know, due to just great performance of our teams, uh, focusing on work and capital and some of the other initiatives we've had going, we've been able to pay down debt quicker than, than, than even we'd hoped a little bit. Uh, we're going to stay focused on that through the first quarter or through the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, we do have a, a, a board meeting coming up next week to get our budgets for next year approved where we'll talk more about capital deployment strategies and, and um, get our CapEx approved and things like that. So right now our focus is continuing to pay down debt, debt this year. Uh, we still think we've got, got some uh, that we can do. Um, so I, I'd say, but artificially, we're, we're not really trying to drive towards that two and a half, two point seven five times right now. We do not have any uh, acquisitions in the pipeline, so so we don't have that as a cash need at the moment. Um, but as we look at some opportunities for investments next year, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to delay that until we uh, we discuss it with our board first. Very helpful. Thank you. Then I I want to uh, ask about the guidance for. 20, fiscal 24, uh, kind of you, you, you um, on the sales side, uh, increase the lower end of the range. But when I when I kind of look at year-to-date performance versus uh, your, your full-year target, um, low end 279 for the fourth fiscal fourth quarter, up to like roughly um, roughly flat at the high end 379 million of sales. What, what would it take to come in at the low end? Is, is that a um, really conservative um, look here, or, or, or how would how would you frame that up? Thank you. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, good good catch, Lucas. I think that probably is very much so on the low end. Um, you know, we're, we're going to we're going to track much much better than that. Um, we're not tracking to the high end either, but. Um, which I guess is why it's a range. I I, I feel good. Uh, we're we're not chasing business over aggressively right now. Uh, you know there is some price sensitivity out there, so we're trying to keep our powder dry and and let let the folks focus on the the business that's attractive to us, uh, taking good care of our customers and 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 keep from you know chasing business uh, below price levels that we want to want to go after. So. Uh, we're maintaining that discipline, which is why we we set the range. But but yeah, 279 is uh, definitely definitely below what we what we would say we're going to have any shot at uh, getting to. That's that's helpful. Thank you. Then a, a, a quick follow up. I appreciate you'll um, issue guidance in a few weeks or so. But uh, in terms of kind of the big trends that you're seeing heading into your next fiscal year, uh, would you anticipate a slowdown when it comes? Um, uh, to Chips and Science Act, for example, um, or infrastructure, or, or, or do you think those uh, key markets will still, uh, on the construction side, will still be uh, kind of trending higher year on year? And then, of course, you have organic and inorganic growth opportunities that you outlined uh, in your prepared remarks. So, so, so just trying to get a little bit of a flavor as to what would be um, potentially tracking positive versus where you might anticipate a little bit more, more softness in your next fiscal year. Thank you very much. Yeah, Lucas, this is Dave. I think uh, what you'll see there, we, you know, we continue to see positive signs. Our metal coatings business in particular um, is galvanizing a lot of steel for, for new chip plants and utility T&D projects, bridge and highway, uh, and some solar for, for quite some time. So we think that's going to continue. Uh, we also think that the impact of government spending is going to result in multi-year demand for our solutions on both sides of the house, um, particularly those focused on critical infrastructure and, and energy transition initiatives. So, so we feel pretty good about um, the macro. Well, and, I, and I'd add in that, you know, on the pre-code side, I think both their organic growth initiatives is, and um, 
just and, and as well as I, I think residential construction is probably bottom. So hopefully that starts to trend up. Commercial construction has you know look, looking uh, okay, and and so I you know I I feel pretty good about the early part of the year, and as we get into it, um, the nice part is for particularly for pre coat metals. You know, once those volumes start to pick up, we we get some really really good flow through pretty quickly as as, as you start to as we come off the bottom, so to speak. Because it, as we said last time, you know we're down 10 to 12 percent on volume, depending on which market it happens to be, which is which is uh, you know we're outperforming the the market itself, but still we're we're uh, you know we're tracking to where we should have improvement next year. Uh, we have not built well. Shouldn't say that we we have not put our guide, of course, not put our guidance out, um, and, and these will all be good discussions about how aggressive we want to be next year, and how we continue to maintain that uh, that focus on um, on our value pricing and and, ma- and maintain that discipline. So, I I feel pretty good about the first part of the year, and then then the outlook get, just gets a little fuzzier uh, as as I look into uh, fiscal twenty five. I appreciate the color. Uh- Thank you very much for for all the details and insights and continued best of luck. The next question comes from John Franzreb of Sedoti and Company. Please go ahead. Um, Good morning, guys, and congratulations on a very good quarter. Uh, I'd actually like to start with the the guidance. I'm curious whether you started to include JV income in the in the forward guidance for fiscal 2024, or you're still excluding it in that outlook. On the guidance, we have, as we go forward, we will include that in our 2025 guidance for the Q4. We've included the realized yeah. um, results through the three quarters, but no fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Four. And guidance. Yeah, just, just so, you, so you know, John, part of our issue is we're one month in arrears, and they're on a calendar year. So uh, we actually have a board meeting with them coming up fairly soon too, where where we'll get a better <laughs> feel for how the how the first part of their calendar year is looking. Nope, just, just curious. Um, and I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I assume your renegotiations, your negotiations with these zinc suppliers for 2024 are now done. Can you update us with uh, any changes in the pricing outlook, especially with the premiums being such a variable last year? How does that look for the year ahead? Yeah, the premiums have come down. Um, so, yeah, we've we've uh, gone through the, you know, the kick off the year negotiations uh, and, and completed those. So we feel good. One, one, we feel supply is more secure, which, which is why we've been able to adjust some of the on-yard inventories. Um, so, so that's one good thing. Two is uh, the premiums are down. I think about ten cents. So, so that's that's upside as that starts to flow through our kettles, and, and of course the the rest is tied to LME. Got it. And regarding um, pre coat, where do we stand on, on the pricing realization curve? You had some this quarter. You had some last quarter. Is all the low hanging fruit gone, or is there still available pricing to be realized there? Yeah, I, I think you know when we're talking about value pricing, part of it is is the mix we focus on and, and the opportunities that we pursue um, that, that tend to be both attractive uh, in, in terms of longstanding customers and 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 two in in terms of of margin generated on some of those projects. So um, I, I'd say we're still you know we're probably in the mid innings uh, compared to where where we're at on the metal coating side. So. There's still some room. Uh, Kurt and the team they they uh, they're highly focused on growing their business profitably, and and, and we feel like we're we're having really really good discussions on on that topic now. Right, that, that's great news. Uh, and one last question, I'll get back into Q regarding the Washington um, facility. Should we um, anticipate startup costs as we start thinking about the revenue recognition and? and and the timing of everything in 2020, late 25, early 26, or is that a booked revenue that will be immaterial? At this point, it'll be a booked revenue that's immaterial. We will, you know, we will continue to finish the plant on the schedule that we have laid out there, and then we have to get FDA testing 
So as we can finish the construction in calendar 24, we'll start testing the facility. There may be some low revenues associated with that, but it's immaterial at this mm -hmm. point to speak to. Great. Thanks for taking my questions, and congratulations again. Thanks, Thanks John. John. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then one. And our next question will come from Adam Salheimer of Thompson Davis Co. Please go ahead. Hey, good morning, guys. It's a great quarter. Thanks, um, Adam. Quick one on the, on the Avail JV. Are we at the point where we should start baking in just a little bit of income every quarter? Like in, maybe something in the million-dollar range. Yeah, you're, we're, we're, we're to that point. Their, their accounting and all that is stabilized as they've completed their opening books. And, you know, and, and I think at, we will include uh, and give more, you know, more color, uh, uh, both quantitatively and qualitatively as, as we put out the fiscal 2025 guidance. Um, yeah, just it's coincidentally, but uh, so we've got the, our board meeting and then their board meeting. And, and then hopefully we'll be able to put some guidance out and 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 a, give some specific color around what to expect uh, from a veil. You know, it's they they basically we completed the transaction in the September um, in 22. They went through a full year. I I feel real good about it. They're uh, they're performing performing well, and so I I am looking forward to be able to uh, to have y'all include some of that in the in each quarter. Okay. And then, Philip, um, you referenced a favorable mix in Q3, I think in both segments. I was just curious kind of what that was and if that continues into Q4. The mix is, is really related to the different products, um, you know, that we're servicing our customers with. And I think it will continue into the fourth quarter. When you look at, at our Q3 last year, we had production – issues, supply chain issues, and, and we spent a lot of the fourth quarter into the first quarter of last year improving that. I think you'll see that in the Q4, over Q4 change, that we've really improved the operational um, efficiencies of these businesses. Okay. Uh, lastly, are you guys anticipating additional debt pay down in Q4? We should have some additional debt pay down in Q4. Okay. Although there will be All a little right, pressure, but sorry, there will be oh, yeah, a little I think pressure. It is a seasonally slower, yeah, quarter for cash flow. Yeah, it's a seasonally slower, and then we've got the Deja Blue project funding in Q4 and Q1 that were more of the equipments arriving. Um, but we we have done really well with 85 million in debt reduction through the first three quarters, and we are hopeful and focused on trying to reduce that further in Q4. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, guys. The next question comes from John Brott of Kansas City Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, I guess my, uh, one, of my, one of my questions is, um, if you had the opportunity and at the right price, would you have any interest in selling your 40% interest in the, um, in, in your, um, in the, um, uh, your subsidiary or your, your venture? Yeah, I think that's you know. First, I'll say I like the Avail team. So. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, it's you know it's an investment that um, in, in, and we sold it to investors. They they've got a you know some transaction date in in their mind, and and as they continue to hopefully grow and improve the business. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a it's an investment for us. We 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 like the people over there, but. Um, but yeah, if we get the opportunity to 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 do that, it, absolutely, we consider it both strategically and tactically, as um, you know, when, as we have these discussions with our board. Okay, okay, and and also, uh, Tom, you mentioned that you're seeing some in the metal coating business some price sensitivity out there, you know, relative maybe to where it was last quarter. Um, has there been any, any uh, movement in that? Uh, uh, that sounds price sensitivity getting worse, getting better. Any any um, any thoughts on that? You know, I think one of the things that happens to us we we come in. You know, as the 
as winter months hit and the uh, construction slows down and infrastructure projects slow down, I think we always kind of sense that there's there's more price sensitivity. Uh, quite frankly, I'm I'm not so sure that what we're just feeling is, you know, the normal volume fall off as as we get into uh, winter months and slower construction, or because it's it it hasn't worsened and and um, really hasn't changed much since uh, since our last comments, and it, and a lot of it does boil down to what's the mix of activity. Uh, I don't necessarily want to call out which pieces of our business are more profitable and uh, mm-hmm. and alienate customers. So. Um, but uh, but let's just say when that mix shifts and we move off of some of the stuff that's a little lower priced, um, not, not that we have bad business, by the way, um, you know, so we do see the price move with that. So I, I have to say we're, we're holding our price points and our price multipliers uh, very carefully and, uh, and then following the mix. So we have not seen any worsening of the signs and we haven't really seen any worsening of of volumes, but uh, but we're just coming through the holidays. So so our our folks actually had had a few days off for a change, which was uh, which was probably nice for them, and hopefully they're all rejuvenated as we fit the new year. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. All right. Thanks. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Tom Ferguson for any closing remarks. Thank you, operator. Thank you all for your time today. I really look forward to updating you on our fourth quarter and full year results in a few months and uh, and issuing uh, fiscal 2025 guidance. So thank you for your time. The conference is now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation and you may now disconnect.